We are going to start out by making the walls to the countertop. I drew out the countertop to leave a half inch overhang over the counter walls. The countertop is measured at 5.5 inches width, where the walls of the countertop are measured at 5 inches wide. You can see the overhang when placed on top of each other. Next we cut out rectangular pieces and painted them to act as the counter drawers. Using a 1 16th drill bit, I drilled two holes in the drawer face, bent a large paper clip, and cut it to act as the drawer handles. Next I used adhesive to attach the drawers to the counter walls we just made and painted. To make the kitchen sink, I am using two rounded square cups I found at Walmart. I flipped them over, squared them off, and traced their outline. From there I cut the tracing to fit the cups flush inside of them. I then cut the board to make a quarter inch lip for the sink bowl. After fitting everything together and gluing it, I brought it outside and painted it a metallic silver color to make the sink look more realistic. I then drew on the countertops where the sink and faucet would be installed. Using the tracing I then cut it out with an X-Acto knife for the sink to fit. I used a bent metal straw for the faucet and the sink fits perfectly using the quarter inch lip to keep it from falling through. I covered the MDF board used to make the countertops in a white granite veneer to make it look a lot more stylish and modern. All you have to do is cut it, peel it, and stick it. To make the kitchen sink and faucet actually functional, I will be using a 12 volt touch switch I will link in the description. Using the schematic shown, I hooked it up with a relay to turn on and off a pump to run the faucet. Here you can see me testing the circuit with an LED to make sure it is working. Because the metal straw is conductive, I can slide it through the touch contact to have the same result. In this way, we can see how it would look installed into the countertop. Now that everything is working, we can replace the LED with the pump. I am using a small fountain pump and strip the conduit to get the input power wires. I cut the black line wire, which I will put across the relay to allow power to be turned on and off via the relay, same as the LED. Once done, it looks like this and we can test it out. You can hear the relay turning on and off the pump when the faucet is touched. Now we can install it into the countertop again and test it out. You can see what the circuit is doing real time on the right based on the touch signal to the faucet. To set up the oven range I am using a sheet of aluminum which I cut two holes on and bent a small lip. I made a small U support underneath it to keep it from bending. Using a wire basket, I cut out a small grate cover to fit the width of the stove top. I then used washers and balsa wood painted red to make the oven knobs. I am now going to create an electrical mechanism which will raise and lower a platform using a DC motor. The platform will hold the candles used for cooking. When the turn knob is turned one way it will raise the platform and the other way will lower. By changing the height of the platform we can bring the candle closer and further from the top, thus changing the heat amount. Here is the platform for the candles. A nut is connected to the platform. The nut and screw will act as a worm gear for the lifting mechanism. I made slots and wood to act as guides for the platform so that it lifts and lowers evenly. Now I will install all the parts together and you can see everything working as expected. Next the turn knobs will be integrated into the stove top and into the turn knobs that we made earlier out of the washers. The first knob is for heat adjustment. I added a second knob to act as an on and off switch for the stove and the other two are just to complete the look. You can see how the circuit works below as the switches are adjusted. Next we move over to the overhead cabinets. I made a rectangular wood block with a cutout to fit a range hood into it. Again we added cabinets to make the look more realistic. Once that is finished, I moved on to making the kitchen hood. I first drew out cuts on a paper and folded it to test the design of the hood. I moved this design and traced it onto an aluminum sheet we used earlier. I then again made the same cuts as the paper onto this using a miter saw. I used small wooden pieces to make sure the folds were even. And once that was done, I cut it to size so we can fit it into the overhead cutout. Being ambitious, I wanted this to be functional as well. So I fit an MDF board into the bottom, 
took that and cut out small squares to fit three scrubber fans. I then spray painted it metallic silver and glued the fans into place. I then put that platform back into the hood and glued that into place. And to finally add another feature, I added a small LED strip to act as a hood light. Once everything was put into place, I organized the wires in the back and soldered connections together onto a breadboard. You can see me sending 12 volts DC to it here to test it. Now that that was done, we can do all the electrical in the overhead cabinets. I added LED strips under the cabinets to give light to the countertops. It was as simple as sticking it on and soldering positive and negative connections. I added glue over the solder joints to insulate the electricity. I routed all the wires to a central power supply board that I would be sending the 12 volts to. I then added a on and off switch for the LEDs. You can see the result of the LED circuit with the switch. Then finally, I wired in the hood electricity to the same power source as the LEDs. All the wires will be hidden in the compartment behind the cabinet and will not be visible. You can see me testing all the switches out to make sure that everything works, which it does. Now we move on to the refrigerator. I made a small wooden box and cut out slots for the fridge and a small shelf. Once those were cut, I added a divider, which will also act as an additional support. Everything was sanded down smooth and small footer panels were added. Everything was then painted to match the cabinets. Using thin plexiglass, we made clear shelves to fit into the fridge. These were installed at even heights using hot glue. A dual painted backboard was fit to cover the back of the fridge and the shelves. Next we made a fridge door using MDF board painted silver, an aluminum sheet for the front, and hinges to allow to open and close. The aluminum sheet is glued onto the front to make a cleaner and more realistic look. The door hinges are then mounted onto the fridge base to cover the opening. Now we can open and close the door, but the door doesn't always stay shut. To fix this we will use magnets. Attach the magnets to the inside corners of the door. We can fit two others in matching spots on the wall. Now when we shut it, it will stay closed. To make the fridge handle, I will again be using that wire basket from earlier. Using super glue, I attach the handle to the front of the fridge. I finished it off by adding cabinets around the fridge and shelf to match the rest of the kitchen. Using some small craft wood, I made a small plate holder for aesthetics. Again I used small craft wood to construct the windows. I then painted them black and glued clear acrylic onto the front to make the look more realistic. I cut rectangular holes into the back wall where the windows would fit over. The windows were then glued to fit over the cutouts on the wall. Finally, I added thick wood supports behind the walls to ensure that it could hold the weight of the overhead cabinets and keep it from bending and warping. And now before we install everything together, I added a layer of polyurethane to what would be the floor of the kitchen to give it a shiny and smooth look. Now all that's left is to install everything together.